This is this is so exciting. This is uh, I have to just start off by saying what we're about to show off in, in live in real time is probably the one most exciting exciting feature about Omniverse in my eyes, uh, and that's collaboration. Uh, we're going to show how developers can actually work together at the same time in the same scene. Um, so this is like, uh, this is transformative in, in my eyes for only not only for small teams, for big team. It's, uh, to me, it's a, it's a really big game changer. So this is, uh, so we're probably going to have some mistakes or, or crashes that happen along the way. Uh, Omniverse is an open beta, but uh, it's going to be so exciting. We did a tech rehearsal before and it's uh, just really exciting. Um, so b before we get too started, let's, uh, let's just, just do one quick thing. Um, and I think I'm hearing that the music might be a little too loud. So Wendy, if you can, yep. uh, see if you can I work got your it. Magic. Um, so uh, let's define, because uh, every time this is actually, this is also our 10th show, this is our 10th live stream, which is another reason to celebrate. Um, these are just getting better and better. And thanks to the great developers at Omni Omniverse that are uh, contributing their time to do these show and tells and take questions from the community. Thanks to our community for, for tuning in and watching. Um, but let's define first, so everybody understands what Omniverse is. So, um, so Adam, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, every time I ask somebody, to get a slightly different reason because it's really a big platform. So, why don't, uh, before you introduce your team, why don't you introduce yourself and mm -hmm. tell us what what Omniverse is? Right. So, um, I'm Adam. Um, I'm uh, in charge of the physics and physics uh, simulation team uh, of Omniverse. And uh, right, what is Omniverse? So that's. Uh, uh, you know, really tough question. We've uh, we've made hours of of, of um, you know presentations answering that, but it's effectively a real time three D uh, simulation and collaboration platform. So um, basically, uh, we have uh, this nucleus server that uh, is uh, where all of your version three D data goes and is is hosted. Uh, we're going to be showing how we're going to be all connecting to the same uh, nucleus server that we have uh, in California, even though the guys that you're seeing are all over the world. And uh, we have a real-time connection. So you can not only connect from this application that we have, it's it's one of the many uh, Omniverse applications. It's called Omniverse Create. It's uh, uh, an editor application. But it would also be possible to, to connect a number of other third-party applications like uh, Autodesk, uh, 3D Studio Max, or Maya, or uh, you know a number of other uh, tools. You have to make a connector plugin, and then you can connect to the Nucleus server, and then you have basically a real-time bi-directional collaboration. Um, and you can you can do something like a like a multiplayer game in in DCC. Uh, content creation, which is super exciting. And of course, um, us being the simulation team, we're most excited uh, about the, the, the simulation capabilities. So we are able to simulate a lot of different effects um, that, uh, that, that are possible in real time. And, uh, and uh, we're, we're really proud of what, what, what we're able to do and, and also of the, of the authoring that we're already able to do in this beta. And of course, we're working uh, day to day to make that authoring capability even better. And then of course, uh, this being NVIDIA, everything that you're going to be seeing is uh, real-time ray traced or path traced with RTX technology. That is an amazing overview. Um, and so, uh, so it, actually, uh, why don't you introduce members of the team and then specifically say where they are, because I think that will blow people away also. Right, right. So um, again, I'm Adam, I'm in Zurich, uh, Zurich, Switzerland in Europe. Then we have Gavin here. Gavin is uh, uh, also engineer on the on the physics team, so um, physics developer located in California. We have Andrew, uh, engineer uh, on physics and in particular on flow. So he's he's doing all of the the volumetric uh, simulation magic. Uh, he is located in St. Louis, and we have Michal, who is located in the Czech Republic. So. Um, we are all working on, on the simulation tech since a number of years, and uh, we're really excited to show what we can, uh, what we can now put together maybe in, in Create. So, yeah, so we're, we're currently looking at four screens. So you're all sharing your application. Uh, so this is real time. Mm -hmm. uh, none of this is, has been recorded. Um, and let me give a little quick preview of what we're, you guys are going to be working with. Uh, so big shout out and thank you to Jeremy Lightcap who was one of the winners of our original Marbles contest. 
uh, uh, he did that beautiful scene that you could see behind me, uh, a Western scene that really inspired uh, a lot of us on NVIDIA and the community. Uh, he was able to create this, this great scene from our Marvel's assets. So we are going to take that beautiful scene and we're either going to mess it up completely or <laughs> or just add something new to it, um, probably a little bit of both, um, and make it a, a racetrack. Um, but right. it was a, a great, starting, um, great starting place for us to work from. Um, so you can kind of uh, get a little inspired. Right, so the idea is to make a racetrack around this uh, little western town. And uh, to do that, the first thing we need to do is add a car to it. So uh, this we have just like hot off the presses. It's it's literally just new since since last week. It's not in the in the public release yet, but uh, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek at this. We have something called our Ganverse. 3D image to car extension right here. So uh, what I did now is I just went windows and extensions. Um, it has to be said that Omniverse is an extremely modular system. So everything is a plugin effectively. We call the plugins extensions. Uh, the render is an extension. The simulation engine is an extension. And uh, so is everything else, including this image to car thing. So I can just toggle it on here. The extension will load dynamically. And then it already pops open a property window for itself here. So now I can close the extension viewer. Uh, what this extension does is uh, it uses a deep neural network to basically uh, let me pick a picture of a car. And I, I loaded a bunch of car pictures now in my pictures folder on my computer as preparation. Uh, and it's going to t turn that picture off of the internet. So it, it here it doesn't show thumbnails, but I can I can show over here. So I have Tesla Roadster and I have this Lada. So my, my grandpa used to have this uh, Russian Lada back in Hungary when I was a kid. This is what the picture looks like. And uh, we're just going to take this picture and turn it into a drivable 3D model of a car instantaneously that's being simulated with physics. So I'm just going to take the picture just click OK, and uh, the neural network basically figures out uh, the textures and the and the 3D shape of the car, and uh, you can see it appearing right here. So the the texture is just loading. You can see the progress bar. I love this so much. <laughs> and there it is. So um, you can see that uh, that this this boxy. Uh, old school car in its in its boxy charm has appeared here and then I can immediately turn on the headlights turn on the headlights and there you go headlights are working so to to um, in this little test stage and we're gonna we're gonna bring this over into the the actual uh, Western scene in a moment but first let me just really quickly so I can just I can just from this asset browser just drop in a uh, bit of um, vegetation and then I can just uh, select the car and then click on drive right here and then I already have the follow camera set up and then with the arrow keys I can start driving around my scene so that's uh, that's basically what this extension will be able to do for you once we release it hopefully soon uh, so with that, let me switch over to the Jeremy Western scene. So I'm going to, I already have it loaded in the background in a different stage. So I'm going to not save this. Um, and now, Wendy, you're going to have to tell me, I think now I have to, exactly, now I need to reshare my screen uh, right here, go live. So... Um, let me know, Wendy, when that's when that's again. Um, it's, yep, you're good. <laughs> up, I'm good. Okay, great. So then I want my viewport here, and there we go. So, okay, doop, 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 doop. the camera is moving. Yep. So where is the car? Here we go. So you can see this time I already set this up so we don't waste much time. This time I picked this uh, Tesla Roadster picture right there. So we have now a much more streamlined vehicle. And uh, uh, now I also want to 
if I'll maybe zoom out a little bit to, to show what we have done so far. So basically we have the Western town over here. Uh, these amazing buildings were modeled from the marbles assets by Jeremy. And uh, yeah, it's it's way better than the programmer art that we normally work with. So, <laughs> so, so huge thanks for, for letting us uh, uh, use this stage. And what we have done now is all of this town stuff uh, is this, this node, I can expand it. All of these houses are here. So I can select like, you know, uh, house one, it's like right here. So it, it gets a yellow highlight and you can see all of its parts. It's made from the marbles uh, contest uh, assets, obviously. So I can I can quickly zoom in here and you can see the, the side. This is brilliant. It's made out of rulers and pencils and, uh, and everything. So uh, on top of this uh, stage or, or layer rather, we have added two other layers. One of them is a layer for the GAN car and there is another racetrack layer that has these pencil, uh, so uh, trackside objects. Now, the really cool thing about Omniverse and uh, is that it's using this USD um, format and uh, collaborative authoring format by Pixar that lets you add layers to 3D content and uh, each layer can have effectively opinions and attributes that are attached to the same object. So uh, there's a layer hierarchy, the root layer is the strongest, um, but uh, but these layers effectively shine through. So if I don't put another like GAN car uh, data into this layer, then uh, then then the this uh, GAN car layer is going to be shining through. And we have now uh, enabled these green little cloud icons here. They're basically the the life sync icons. You just have to click these, and that means that. Even though we're com in completely different places around the world, the four of us, uh, we're all uh, in real time syncing up in terms of the content of these two layers uh, on the on the server. So what I can do right now uh, is I have this layer set as the authoring layer. So that also means that any kind of physics simulation that happens is going to be written into this layer and basically um, mutating this vehicle that's going to be driving around. And the other guys are going to be seeing it if they also have the cloud icon turned on. So I should be able to now just press drive over here. That's effectively just going to start simulation. Let me see if that works. Yep. And then I have my um, third person camera and I can turn the steering wheels and I can start driving. And now you guys need to tell me if the other guy's screens are reflecting the fact that this car has started driving around our little racetrack. It looks good. Let me see. Uh, Mikal? Yeah, it's broken for me, but the reason being that actually I've got these uh, deltas left in the root layer, so I'm going to remove those now. And see? Okay. Now there it's updated it for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, Michal, you left something here. I think there's like, so this this is, I, I'm going to show you how we diagnose physics problems because I can tell I'm hitting an invisible object here. So let me just, I'm just going to turn on the physics colliders visualization. And there there is some stuff here, Michal. So you're going to have to maybe unhide yeah. these things or... I think or, you also or, have the deltas. And I think you also have the deltas in the root layer. Can you have a look? Oh, you yeah. think you think that's that's the thing that's going on. Aha, uh -huh, okay, in the root layer. Hmm. There is something under racetrack. Under racetrack. A world and then racetrack. Um honestly I'm not seeing it, you know. So you know what? I think Uh okay, oh well we, no, we you're, just... you're right. You're right. We I could just it. put that in. I don't know. Or, 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 or maybe you can you like we're live syncing. Yeah. Just disable the disa disable yeah, no. the collisions on that. Drive. Okay, it's, drive. It's already, it's already, it's, it's already it's taken away. care of. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna drive. There we go. So That's I, there you go. The, we have a very simple code for the follow camera, and it's unfortunately it's like it keeps going behind buildings. But um, okay, okay, cool. So that's working. 
So what we thought, if we're going to show you in terms of the live collaboration features, is that these guys are going to start adding some more simulation stuff, some more physics stuff, some more uh, trackside objects while I'm driving around here. And, and those should basically just start appearing in my, effectively in my game level, in my, uh, yeah. on my racetrack for me. So what, what's crazy about this is that you are not even in the same office right now. You guys are literally in different countries. Actually, different That's continents. Right. Different different continents. continents. <laughs> yeah. Seems I've forgotten some pencils here, so I'm just gonna finish yeah. the racetrack. Let, let's not forget you guys, though. Like Edmar, you're in California, right? I'm actually I'm on the East Coast. I'm in Vermont. Oh, you are. Okay, well let's let's add that to the mix because there is also some Discord action going on, even if you're not running Omniverse right now. <laughs> That's, uh... That's right. And one side note on that. So uh, we tried a little right before the stream to see if we can uh, highlight one uh, stream at a time so we can you can see one screen a little bigger. But we were having some challenges getting the, the layout to work perfectly with everybody's video cam. So that's why we have the screens at this, uh, this kind of uh, size right now. Um, but this will allow everybody to see everything at the same time. And then uh, we're going to do this again for sure. So yeah. we'll have, and we'll have uh, the we'll fixes. Have the yeah. yeah. <laughs> But we thought it was, uh, this is not something we wanted to sit on. And I wanted to show everybody what this looks like in real time. It's just showing yep. off Ganvers. Um, it's huge. Yeah, it's so I cool. I can't like, wait to uh... play with it. <laughs> <laughs> is there a specific car you're trying to uh, bring in? Me? Uh, yeah. I, I want to be a van, OK? Now, I'll send you a picture of, of our. We have a conversion van. Uh, uh, I'll, send, I'll send you a picture. Every racing game I play, like Rocket League, I'm always a van. So <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, we we could do some Rocket League simulations. Like, could yes. you could you guys like add some marbles in here for me to like kick around with the car? That would be I great. I just want to show off that I can see like all the other users. Uh, there as cameras in the level, so I can see what Adam is no, looking there, at. There are some marbles here. I'm gonna try to escape from the track here. Can I? Let's see. I'm not uh, sure. Yeah, I'm not you sure. You made the barriers are... too high. I, I... <laughs> I wonder okay, if hang I on, can I'm... like drag myself. So, oh yeah, no, look gonna... at that. <laughs> <I> nice. Just... <laughs> I, can, I, I can still do mouse drag. I can I can maybe lift myself across the obstacle. Oh, oh I landed with the cows here. <laughs> Come on. No. Hang on. I had some okay. template marble somewhere. I can restart um, myself. I got stuck on the here cattle. Here it, here it is. Yeah. So there's one marble. Oh yeah. Okay. I escaped, but it looks like these marbles are static marbles. All right, so while everybody's working on their stuff, we have an interesting question uh, mm -hmm. in the chat. Um, Tio would love to know, well, first I say nice work, guys. Uh, can you comment on the hardware power to run this uh, run this type of uh, effort? Like the um, GPU. Right, so, so the GPUs that we're using. Yeah, so um, I think uh, the right now, Michal is, uh, is using a 2080 Ti, and uh, I'm using a Quadro. I'm not sure what what Gavin and uh, and Andrew are using. I'm using a 2080. Using yeah. And I'm using a 3090. Right. So this is uh, this my my Quadro is also the I think A6000. So yeah, I'm. Uh... <laughs> Who do you know at Nvidia? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I you need to ask Corey. That's the secret. Ask. So yeah, but a nice, uh, you know, nice varying selection of GPUs here. That's right. Wonder why I can't move the marbles. It's maybe because the simulation is running and I cannot get it through. Should I just should I just stop it? I'll just I'll just stop it for a second, and um, even yeah, though that, that that shouldn't make a difference. What what happens if you just like drag it in from the asset browser, like just fresh marble from like you just like go into assets right here. And, do, we uh, have a mar do we have a marble here? Yeah, A underscore marble, like the, the fifth one right there. So just like going to um, marble slash assets here. I don't know if you're seeing my screen, probably not. 
Um, and then just drag in a underscore marble. Andrew, from the, we, from the, from the we, content browser. We have some requests for more fire, Andrew. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, okay. Andrew. Oh. <laughs> just fire everywhere. <laughs> All right, now, now I need to drive around and test out the fire. One of the downsides of a Western scene is that it's made of all wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what just happened? Okay. Andrew, can you try the, to see if, if, if you, or Andrew or Gavin, if you guys can try to add some marbles? Um, maybe it works for you. <laughs> try to. Chat says, I hope that car has good insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, uh, I, which, which one of you gentlemen, backwards. if any, were here uh, working on the project the first time uh, this was done internally? And what was your reaction like? Um, I mean, it, it was it was one of relief and of, of you know, basically, uh, because I mean, we are <laughs> programming it, so. Um, is is that what you mean? Am I am I? Yeah, oh, like, like, you know, yeah. just the just right, the fact that, that this is such a, a big change in how uh, teams can work together. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm mean, super excited about that. Uh, of yeah, I mean, you know, this is this is the thing. Like, it's relatively early days for this collaborative portion, right? So that's that's why we're uh, you know we're we're also trying to test it out ourselves. So you can tell that we're normally spending our time programming the the simulation aspects. So that's why we're not really super familiar with the with the, oh now you had like one 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 lap later and the and the tree has colliders that's that's really yeah, cool yeah. Uh, just like the marble, it. just the marble asset is really small so you have to scale it up oh that's yeah. what's going on okay jeez I'm blocked. okay hold on i'm gonna drive around <laughs> well you know you complain is it doesn't collide so i've added a collision yeah uh, thank Ooh, you. Another another yeah. question about destruction. What about destroying stuff? Can they make a giant marble and crush buildings? That's probably part of uh, what well, we could talk about. Yeah, blast. Yeah, yeah. So so yes, you can you can do that. Um, I think right now our the, the the thing with blast is that we're still optimizing the performance a great deal. And one of the things that that happens is whenever stuff fractures that there, there is like you know the, the, your frame rate tends to tends to have a, a great big hitch so we, we could try to do that but uh honestly right now uh during this live sync like we've not tried doing uh, doing this whether it's going to work um with the with the live sync enabled so i would probably not go there right now with a fracturing marble but um but it, actually, uh, it should work that's a great um, plug for next week's live stream because yeah. that's exactly yeah. uh, what, what will be that's happening. Right. We're going to have members of the Blast team here, and uh, oh, they've, ho, ho. they've been working that's on nice. uh, a, 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 a nice scene with buildings, and they're going to kind of break things apart uh, in real time with destruction. So that it, that's going to be a lot of fun. They've been really eagerly anticipating this live stream for several weeks. So uh, so great timing for that. So next week, I think actually it's the same day and time as today. Awesome. Yeah. So, so I, I, I think that's a brilliant answer that the, uh, that the blast team is going to be showing something that they have been working on and, uh, it's, um, it's really cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm also excited about that. I don't want to spoil anything, but it's, it's going to be a really, it's so also it's another question really cool about fluid simulation. Uh, do you want mm -hmm. to talk a little about fluids? Yes. So, um, we are also working on uh, a number of different uh, fluid simulators. There's one included with physics for liquids. And then we have this one called flow that you're seeing right now. This is also fluid dynamics. It's for more gaseous effects. Uh, maybe um, uh, Andrew can talk about that in a second. The physics one is uh, smooth particle hydrodynamics. It's uh, suitable for, for liquids. And uh, we are able to do small small amounts of liquids so maybe you know at high fidelity like a like a glass of uh, of water in real time something like that and uh, 
we are also adding a technology for like large bodies of water, which is uh, going to be something. If you guys remember, like Nvidia WaveWorks, then it's it's something that's going in that direction. So it's basically like big ocean waves and stuff like that. Hey, that's good. So that'll definitely be another future live stream for sure. Oh yeah. We actually have a pretty big backlog of topics. Um, <laughs> we're doing these about once a week, uh, but we also want to include uh, community spotlights like we did uh, last week, I believe it was with, with Jeremy actually. So um, any Omniverse users out there, if you want to show off cool stuff you're doing, uh, reach out to us on Discord um, or through email. Um, and we'd love to show off uh, show off your stuff and, yeah. and talk with you. Okay, then I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get stuck under this one. <laughs> You, you need to add some kind of on ramp for this bridge. I guess it's still being prepared. I'll just I'll just go around the other direction. Maybe I can I can make the jump from the other way. Oh yeah, thanks for putting out the fire on my car. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Here's a question. Any plans to integrate native hair curves in Create? Yes, so that's I know that's also being worked on. Um, my team is going to be working on a hair simulation, and uh, we already have a prototype of that. So you know that we we did like uh, hair works in the past, if you guys can remember it. And what we're aiming for is basically like way higher fidelity. Now that's that's really you know not just. Um, suitable for real-time games, but it's it's really also going to be good for, you know, like offline quality hair. I'm really excited about that. It's um, it's still too early to show anything though. So right now, the, the next thing that, uh, that we will probably come out with is soft body simulation and then probably going into the direction of cloth and clothing at some point, but I don't want to, you know, put dates on that. And I mean, there's like a lot of other kind of like oddball requests, like, you know, just on vehicles, right? Like people have been asking for like planes and boats and helicopters and stuff like that. So that that's the cool thing. There's like an infinite set of things that you can do in, in any one area in, in simulation. And then there's the entire idea of combining simulation with uh, deep learning and AI, like, like we're kind of doing here also with the with the car, right? Like, so the, the car model was uh, was AI generated. Uh, there are also opportunities to use AI more directly. So one project that we're involved in with uh, the um, technical university here in Zurich is to, um, is they are modeling this uh, quadruped walking robot with physics, but the joint motors are being modeled with AI. So basically there's a, there's a deep neural network that imitates the the joint um drives basically because it's a relatively sophisticated like combination of uh, of electric motor and like um elastic spring actuation to make it safe uh, with humans right so you can basically block the robot's arm and it's not going to hurt you because uh, it's it's just going to be springy and uh, rather than 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 hard and stiff but that makes it all the more difficult to simulate. And you can simulate these kind of complicated interactions best with, uh, with AI. So that's, that's a really exciting direction that we're looking into. And on that note, we're getting a question, which, uh, what, what are each of your guys' favorite physics capabilities? Well, um, I mean, I, <laughs> my career is in rigid body dynamics. So that's what I started with straight out of school. And, uh, that's what I still kind of work on. So, so I'm, I'm definitely a rigid body dynamics guy. And, uh, so right now, for example, I'm, I'm working, um, with my more technical hat on, on better capturing gyroscopic effects and stuff like that. So if, uh, if the next thing you see from me is like a motorcycle simulation or something like that, then, then you'll, you'll know that, uh, that that has worked out, but I could show you some other like cool gyroscopic demos that I put together. Um, if if we don't have anything else to talk about uh so well, I've, well. I've been chasing that but maybe like <laughs> i, I want to let the other guys talk about about what they like yeah um i used to work in game dev and uh so honestly like my favorite stuff was usually ragdolls and tweaking those to so they would like look good we were working on a medieval game and uh 
So you would have a lot of people dying in sword fights. And then, of course, <laughs> the body would have to look at least semi-natural when it was falling to the ground. Or, you know, if you found someone, you would not be looking completely weird. So, yes, uh, ragdolls. Yes, yeah, a good ragdoll yes. is, is, is is definitely a good feature. And that that kind of goes both ways too, because even even ragdolls, like uh, could, could, the funny physics with ragdolls are also you know. Yeah, yeah that of I course that. That, that too. Yeah. That too. <laughs> Wait, what, uh, what game? That, is that's it? one of my pet peeves that we don't have like fast, easy ragdolls here in Omniverse yet. So I'm I'm really hoping that uh, you're going to bring something with the animation team that's that's working on um, you know a lot of super cool digital human animation tech that uh, we need to we need to hook all of that up to physics. Mikhail, what game was that you mentioned? No, it's Kingdom Come Deliverance. Ah, cool. Yeah, so uh, usually, you know, ragdoll, funny ragdolls are nice, but not if you're on the end where you have to fix it. Yeah, right. Very cool. Uh, what about you, Andrew? Andrew likes fire. I, uh, fire. I like fire. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, in, in, uh, in college, I was actually doing more with robotics and image processing, and so I was doing a lot of manipulation of, uh, you know, 2D images on the GPU. And so taking that skill set and then exploring fluid sim worked fairly well, because um, it's kind of that very grid-focused aspect. Um, and, you know, and Flow has been an entire endeavor about kind of eliminating the pitfall of an image having you know kind of finite bounds and and going to a sparse structure so that you can make it effectively unbounded so like when i'm placing fire and smoke in this map i'm not having to think about where any of this actually is right um and so i can even show um I can even show the debug visualization, like in this case. Okay, here we go. So now I can, I can enable the visualization. You can kind of see how, oh, wow. um, how blocks were, you know, dynamically allocated around, like the chimney in this case. Um, and you can even see, like in this case, I've even allocated some extra blocks uh, to kind of a account for a wind being applied to it. That's crazy. Very cool. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay, I'm starting to see it too now. And then like in this case, if I find the right one here, I can even decide whether I want to allocate that so I can turn it off and do a, a more aggressive uh, allocation and boost performance that way. So when you are working with uh, physics like this, these kinds of effects, is it necessary to have uh, like LODs or, you know, different different levels uh, of, uh, you know, clarity based on distance you're looking for performance or no? So for, for physics, LOD is a bit tricky because, of course, you could have like a multiplayer scenario where you're all looking at the same reality and, uh, you know, um, for, for one guy it's close and for the other guy it's further away. Um, and then you also have even in single player scenarios or single user scenarios, you have the thing that, you know, let's say you're, you're simulating something and it's behind your back and then you quickly turn around and look at it. And if it if you would have only resolved it to a low level of detail, you would have to do like somehow a lot of work suddenly to you know quickly come up with like an enriched and 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 sort of like really really um, detailed simulation. So normally you don't do as much level of detail in simulation as you do in graphics, where it's much more clear cut. You know, if something is far away from the observer you can uh, you can use a simplified model so it's it's not that common but there are some things yeah, you can do and the fluid side of it gets very interesting too because um when we we make these sort of discrete grids we get um we get sort of a, a numerical uh our, our numerical approximation causes a viscosity and so if you try to start messing with the resolution of the grid your effective viscosity changes and 
And so it's kind of an open challenge how you would um, do different levels of detail, but keep the exact look. Uh, it's even something we've kind of talked about wondering if, you know, deep learning could help us uh, figure out how to do the LOD levels and keep the, the parameters you know, tune the parameters for each LOD level so that you keep the look that you're you're going for. Very interesting. Oh, here's a here's a cool question. Uh, can they dim the environment lights so that the fire and headlights are lighting the tracks? Yeah, we could do that. I suppose we could. Do, I I can try that um, in my uh, in my view. So the the lights are here. And I would town. definitely. I would recommend pass traced for maximum light interaction there. Okay, well, let me just find the lights. Uh, maybe I search for them. I, uh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Like... Adam, we're not authoring into in, uh, the root layer and the settings are in the root layer. So it, was always, yeah. it will always override us. Um, hmm. Okay. So basically, you would have to change it. And yes, that's that's what I'm doing. It's so it's only going to be showing up in my view, but yeah. that's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan. So I'm gonna set the root layer now as my authoring layer. Um, and then I'm going to search this layer for the lights. Okay, here we go. Town lights. Um, dome light here, property. Well, Adam is setting that up. Gav, uh, do you have a favorite? Oh, it just changed. Did somebody just do it for me? <laughs> or, or, or am I, I... Did, I hit, I hit the eye, but I don't know if it would sync or not. I guess uh, the answer uh... is yes. <laughs> um, so one of the, uh, to, to answer the question about the coolest physics projects you've been part of, there's a lot to choose from, but. Uh, uh, Maybe I'm out here, but the earliest things that I worked on, um, for NVIDIA was a uh, physics based character controller, um, that I wrote from scratch. So I had to do animation and physics for a character, um, and that meant uh, putting a character in a pose or like having a character trying to reach a certain pose of an animation keyframe, but also interacting to, to, uh, with physical objects and stuff. So, you know, if it's walking, but he walks into a wall, it doesn't put his arm through the wall. Um, and, uh, you know, that goes as far as like when he's walking and there's elevated steps, it'll automatically, you know, the foot will collide with a step instead of just having some static walking animation. That's always at a certain level. Um, so that, that was really fun to work on and an interesting learning experience for me. That's wild. So how, that was a, a few years ago? Uh, yeah, in, in around 2015. All right. Well, the car yeah. seems to be driving and, and I have the dramatic lighting. So that's that's one wish. Um, Granted. I switched to, I switched yep. to pass tracing. Yeah, same here. So you guys see my Vendi? Is my camera visible right now? Yes. Or... Okay. Oh, this this looks awesome. It, I I love this. I love this suggestion. It just. So I. I was just gonna I'm say, sure. like, um, it it blows my mind that this is being rendered in real time, and you just switch lights around, and everything casts shadows and has light. Yeah, I mean, that's to be. I, I'm a physics programmer. I'm not a graphic artist. All I did is I literally turned off the lights with a, you know, it's just by hiding the, the lights in the scene and this yeah. is what happens. Yeah, it's actually worked for us since the visibility was not authored in the root layer. So we were able to override it in the lower priority layer. Fire is yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> One of the things I'll mention too, so I'm actually still in uh, real-time mode. And if you go into the, the ray tracing settings, you can also do indirect diffuse lighting. And uh, ah. indirect diffuse lighting will use the path tracer um, to uh, compute the indirect effect. And it's a little bit laggier than the path tracing, but then you also don't have all the noise to contend with. So you can kind of see when I move the tree, you know, it, it, the light level kind of fades in, um, but it's still a nice compromise between uh, path trace and real time. All right. 
where, where is that exactly? This GP. is this is in the the render settings in the ray tracing section. And, and then you kind of go all the way to the bottom to indirect diffuse lighting. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yep. Um, Michal, you need to probably move. Okay, now this worked. Okay, I thought I wasn't going to get over them because you have like quite like a lip to these jumps, but uh, but it worked Oops. out actually. Oh, you, so you have sorry. to remember I have like a very sporty Tesla Roadster here. You know, it's very <laughs> low, low to the ground. You need to like this is not a you know pickup truck. You didn't go with the pickup truck. I, no, I this to, is my like, mistake. It, it seems it's oh, it's because it's a rigid body, so. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, wow. Look at that lighting it. effect. That's awesome. Like, wow, the headlights are now like really like right up against that thing and it just like blooms out. Yeah, what? Uh, I'm wondering what, what is that? What object is that? Um, it's so shiny. This is, this is the, yeah, this is a part of my cube here. Trying to, I, trying to, trying and to and now, now I can, I, 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 I snuck out of your track. Ha <laughs> ha. No. Okay, I'm not stuck. I'm stuck. Okay, here. Maybe I can throw myself Jeremy, back. Jeremy, you know, it's funny. We didn't even notice uh, some of the really creative things Jeremy did when he created the scene. We just discovered <laughs> yesterday that for grass, he actually used the very tippy tops of, uh, of paintbrushes and, and the marbles assets we provided. Um, so when we, when we, uh, I think um, when Adam was looking at the scene yesterday, we we're practicing. He pulled the camera back. We said, "Oh." Like a hundred paintbrushes underneath the world, underneath the ground. Yeah. Um, very smart. Very creative. Okay. Jeez, the camera. Uh, lighted with something there that I can't see because of the follow cam. Oh, there. Yeah, there are a lot of like these small things, like the, this house is made of popsicles. Yeah, it it, it was out. that it was that watercolor dropper bottle. So how difficult would it be to maybe have one of you got another person bring in a car, and actually have like a race around this track? Uh, that hmm, maybe in different layers would that work? I mean that's. Yeah. That's we, we didn't try this out. <laughs> <laughs> nice stuff. That's like not been tried so far, but okay. uh, I, I think especially if we put it in different layers, it should work. The the, the thing is right now that the, it's like it's like the authoritative server type of model that like the simulator. Um, you know, if you have multiple simulators trying to like change the same things, like if you put two cars in, then um, they're all going to try to basically yeah on each of the on each of the clients so like let's say like gavin does one and i do one and we both press play then uh, which which is necessary to collect the the keyboard input then they're not just going to try to simulate the one car that that there's like no concept of ownership yet right uh -huh. so so gotcha. they're they're basically <laughs> both going to try to simulate both cars and then it's going to fight over like who's update gets to the server first right like stuff like that so that's that's not yet resolved work in progress soon we will that's be able right. to race <laughs> i mean we would be able to race but uh it would need to be done in a way where we add to the python scripting I mean, it wouldn't be difficult right like we would need to collect the the, the inputs just like you would do in a real game from uh from multiple um like drivers and then send those um as like usd data to your server and then your um or or immediately locally apply forces and stuff like that and like you know steering angles etc to your car and then some other simulation node it could even be like uh you know a, a server at like a third location like let's say on michael's computer could be collecting those uh, those input updates and then simulating but it would need a little bit of custom programming i was just thinking and, you know uh, what, one of the other really cool benefits of this collaborative um feature 
uh, not only that you can work together, but it also makes it a lot easier for people to help each other in terms of workflow, because you'll be able to see a, a, a couple months ago, one of the Omniverse users told me that they were blown away because uh, they ever work with a team of large artists. They were blown away when they started actually being able to see what the artists were doing in real time. And, and he was actually able to much better direct them and help them um, in ways that he just would never have been able to do before because, you know, they were doing it, checking stuff in. So he just saw the, he saw the, saw the finished result and not so much the, the progress and the steps that the artist was taking. And they, uh, and he said he was able to really reduce the time that the artist spent to do certain things. He helped them um, with their workflow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's really a key thing, right? Like uh, already like a couple of years ago when we were starting to, you know, when we were like working on our first uh, kinds of visualization software, uh, this thing about, I mean, that that was when like VR was 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 really, you know, big, and, you know, the, the Oculus Rift came out and the HTC Vive came out for first, right? And, uh, and, and this idea back then to be able to just like do design visualization in VR and then also collaboratively in collaborative VR, that was that was a really big deal. You know, that was that was completely new back then. And uh, and since then, we've just been you know developing the technology to become a lot more accessible and uh, and usable, right? So let's see what what else can we do here. Um, Trying to add some marbles. Maybe I can, let's see, just like do something kind of crazy, add, add like that, that Lego, Lego buggy I could add uh, maybe in here. I wonder if that would work. Um, that would be an asset in my user directory. So that's my authoring earlier. Okay, let's see if this works. Probably going to be really tiny and toy size compared to the car because I think it's to scale. Let's see if this works with Live Sync. So, for those that don't know, we have a growing library of tutorials, demos, and, and workflow tips on NVIDIA On Demand, which is NVIDIA's uh, video streaming service, but also. Um, uh, on YouTube, we have a NVIDIA Omniverse YouTube channel. Um, uh, there you go. Uh, we also have a uh, form. So Wendy, uh, who's here with us and, and doing the awesome magic to make everything look so great. She uh, she is our form queen. Uh, so she, you've probably seen her many times if you've ever been to a form, uh, forums helping people. Um, so there's a great resource to go for help. A lot of our developers are also on the forums, and um, we track a lot of the issue, all the issues there, actually. So that's the best, best place to go for very specific detail report, uh, support. And then for more casual um, kind of interacting with the community, there is also a more limited support there because not all, all of our developers are on it. But definitely we want people to come hang out on Discord. Um, we have, yep, there's the address. For, well, here's an easier one to remember. So discord.gg slash NVIDIA Omniverse. Um, if you go there, you can uh, get an invite, instant access to the, the Discord channel. We have things broken up, uh, similar to the forums, where they're different channels based on mm. different apps, Maybe. connectors, or features. Um, and you could, uh, one of the cool things with Discord, you could actually s select different topics you're interested in, or roles, as it's called in Discord. And then whenever we have an update to share on that specific topic, you'll get a notification, as opposed to kind of getting notified for everything. You can be very specific about what you care the most about. Uh, but the, the cool thing about Discord is that we're just seeing so many cool people sharing their stories, uh, how they're using Omniverse, what their goals are. We see a lot of people helping each other as well, which is so fantastic to see. So definitely, uh, you know, come and hang out there. It's a, a great place to kind of engage with uh, the community and, and also developers. Um, but for super detailed stuff, uh, I always recommend people go to the forums because that's where we can track stuff easily track things and you know grab files and and figure out what what the situation's going on i know especially nvidia we're very <laughs> very picky about stability stability is our number one priority 
And I know it takes a lot of work for people to send in their logs and, and pictures. Um, but if you guys don't do that, you know, we, <laughs> we need you to do that. So please, you know, uh, we we're I think the last couple of crashes we got fixed within a week. So um, just please send your info in we, and just post on the showcase. Let us know what you're working on um because we will contact you uh we'll put you up on our gallery page we'll contact you we'll say hey do you want to be a part of a live stream uh <laughs> and Meyer and i are you know we have we communicate with a lot of people in the community so post the stuff that you're working on um let we us know what you're doing yeah <laughs> there's a couple of really, really cool reasons but not only do uh do we get excited about it just personally it's very inspiring to the developers. Um, and I'm sure I can speak on behalf of the gentleman with us to here today for the physics team, but it's just uh, very inspiring to see how different people are using uh, the features that are in Omniverse and the different connectors. Um, and uh, our goal is to, is to make a platform and keep building a platform that can serve, uh, serve users the best uh, into what they're doing today, but also what they're, what they're going to be doing tomorrow. So sharing uh, sharing your stuff is, is always very helpful, and we definitely want to promote people's work in um, uh, any way we can. So it looks like I uh, basically I tried to do something that it, it didn't really like, which is to drag, drag in a relatively heavyweight um, asset in here, and it brought things down. So is it still running for you guys, or did I, did I also kill your sessions? I'm still going. Um, I seem yeah, to have I found did. a very small buggy on the floor. Yeah, that's that's what, so I, I succeeded in bringing it in. But then I the, the problem was then that uh, the follow camera Python script, it was it was like hooked on to latched onto the Tesla. And whenever I simulated, it insisted on on having that follow camera um, follow the Tesla rather than letting me play with the the, the buggy. So um, okay, there's the buggy. So I, I'm going to try to get closer to it. And uh, yeah, it's tiny. So so obviously this is model to Lego car size, and the Tesla is model to real car size. And an entire Western town is like way bigger <laughs> because uh, we blew it up. So there's going to be enough uh, space for the for the racetrack and this thing is like modeled obviously if you guys have seen that video about this like from individual ego pieces so it's a it's a completely different scale i should I probably just like bring down my camera speed so we can even look at it but um yeah i i think we're probably out of time wendy right uh because uh, um it is five yeah or on my time yeah. it's five <laughs> Exactly. So probably um, we're going to continue with this in a subsequent stream, like doing maybe some something with this guy. But uh, yeah, um, this this one would also be able to be uh, driven around and stuff like that. But uh, and and then there's like Omnigraph stuff to look at there because this one is not done in Python, but with our like uh, um, graphical um, node based uh, visual programming language, basically. So. There is still a lot more things to show and learn about, but uh, we'll, we'll leave that for next time. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Um, I I can't wait to do another one of these. I just love watching you guys work. <laughs> it's amazing. It's really, uh, really impressive watching you all work at the same time. Crazy. All right. Super cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for having us, and uh, and I also quite enjoyed it. So so yeah, I, I hope somebody can benefit from uh, from what you've seen. And uh, yeah, come come see us on Discord. I think we're also all on Discord, and you can just ask us questions if you're trying to also recreate any of this stuff, and um, you know you would like any tips or more tricks. Yeah, I see. Stuff. I see. I see. I see one question uh, mm -hmm. that we don't leave them hanging. So they're asking about the um, like the steps involved in setting up a nuclear server. Um, uh, that, I mean, here in so, the launcher, right? Like, uh, does does anybody have a better answer? I mean, I've uh, you obviously have your local one, so your local mm -hmm. nuclear service that's built in. Basically, you get that as part of the installer. Um, 
beyond that for a team i'm not sure i've not done that like um that's i'm for, probably not the yeah best um, person to ask. graphy official let me whisper you and i'll give you more information on how to get that set up yeah it's basically a couple of versions right it's a workstation nucleus mm -hmm. or the enterprise mm -hmm. version mm -hmm. um, the workstation one is probably good for everyone to test things out um pretty straightforward to set up but um yeah so we'll We'll follow up and uh, definitely come to our Discord and we'll, we can help you there also. All right. Thank all right, you. Thanks, everybody. guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, thanks a lot, Wendy, for doing all of the video work and Edmar for the, the Q&A. It was really fun to do this. So, yeah, I thank think you. I'm uh, if, if the feedback is positive, I'm very happy to do another another session. I, yeah, I hope so. It, this was awesome. Cool. <laughs> all right. Thanks, thanks everybody. Guys. All right. Yeah, thanks. Bye.